Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Genetic Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Lulu. On this week's episode, my guest, Susan Bratton, discusses how to biohack your way to a better love life with her expert tips on libido, desire, arousal, soulmate connection, and much more. Susan Bratton, intimacy expert to millions, is a champion and advocate for all those who desire intimacy and passion their whole life long. She is a co-founder and CEO of two corporations, Personal Life Media Inc., a publisher of heart-connected lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills, and The 20 LLC, a manufacturer of organic and botanical supplements that enhance sexual vitality. A best-selling author and publisher of 44 books and programs, including Sexual Soulmates, Relationship Magic, Revive Her Drive, Ravish Him, Steamy Sex Ed, The Passion Patch, Hormone Balancing, and Hot to Trot. Susan has been featured in the New York Times and on CNBC and the Today Show, as well as frequent appearances on ABC, CBS, The CW, Fox, and NBC. You can find The Susan Bratton Show at betterlover.com. Her personal shares on Instagram at Susan Bratton and her Lust for Life supplements, Flow and desire at the 20 store.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Genetic Genius Podcast. I'm so excited to have my guest, Susan Bratton, today. Welcome. Dr. Lulu, thank you so much for having me here. And thank you so much for being willing to talk about sexual biohacking. And actually, I wanted to make it a distinction that I've come to most recently about that because sexual biohacking is taking what you have and making it better. It's essentially optimization. But for a lot of people, especially women in midlife, they notice that their genitals aren't working as well as they used to. And that happens, cellular dehydration, atrophy of aging, loss of hyaluronic acid, just everything that happens to us that makes us wrinkle up and get old and little <laughs> <laughs> is happening to our genitals at the same time. And so I also like for people to think about what we're going to talk about as sexual regenerative therapies and treatment. Mm -hmm. You're actually turning back the clock. Like you can't even get into optimization or biohacking until you turn back the clock to a more youthful you. Just if we were to go get lasering done on our face. And by the way, I do not recommend lasering <laughs> of the vulva. <laughs> Though there are a lot of people out there who use lasers, doctors who have lasers, women who think lasers are the only option. I like to do things that are less painful, less damaging, and are more like functional, where you're giving your body what it needs to regain youth and reverse the problems that we have from aging of our genitals. And I'll just name them now. Number one is loss of lubrication, super easy to fix. Second one is vaginal atrophy. So often called laxity because as the tissue in the vagina thins, your vagina actually gets bigger and you tend to also lose pelvic musculature, mm -hmm. lose your grip, which is required for pleasurable intercourse. You lose sensation. So the intensity of your orgasmic experience declines with age. It happens almost so imperceptibly slowly mm -hmm. that you don't realize what you've lost till you get it back using these things. And then you're like, oh my God, I had no idea how much I lost. <laughs> That's another issue. And then there's an aesthetics issue. We get a little saggy. Our outer labia get a little saggy and we can plump that back up again. So I'm excited to talk to you about those two pieces. And then there's also the issue of libido. <laughs> so I want to want sex, but I don't. So how right. do you get your libido back as well? And I think those are a lot of the components, but I also think that ageless sexuality and regenerative and sexual mm -hmm. biohacking moves into 
your skin, your hair, your teeth, your bones, your everything, mm. everything feeds your libido. And that ties to your microbiome and your vaginal microbiome. And it's one big system, as we all know. And so what I like to do is I like to give women the kind of the cheap or budget, easy, low hanging fruit things that make <laughs> a huge difference. I like 80, 20, like the 20% that really gets the results. I like to give women the mid range. And then I like for those women who are like, I got the cash. My sex life's important to me. Let's throw everything at it. What's that? So (laughs) uh, those are the kinds of things I'd love to talk to you about today. If that sounds good to you. Oh, that sounds awesome, Susan. That's why I have you here. I'm so excited for (laughs) us to jumpstart 2023, all talking about all those subjects. And I love what you said in the very beginning about biohacking, which we're going to be talking about how to biohack your sex life today, because it's so important, but taking a step back and looking at it from the perspective of resilience, restoration, preservation, longevity. We're going to be talking about those things too. So you're tuning in out there, you're tuning into the right place. (laughs) So Susan, before we jump in, I'd love for you to just take a few moments to introduce yourself to the audience so we can get to know you a little bit better. Yeah. I'm a 61 year old sex expert from Mill Valley, California. I've been in the sexuality space for going on 20 years, and I got into it because I love this phrase, your greatest wound becomes your greatest gift. My husband and I almost got divorced because our sex life fell apart within the first 11 years of our marriage. And it was really due to the fact that he thought it was great and it felt good to him, but I wasn't having good orgasms and I wasn't having orgasms from intercourse. And after over a decade of having intercourse with him without having orgasms, I just didn't want to do it anymore. Mm. And so we were like, let's not get divorced. Like we see all our friends getting divorced and just marrying the guys go and marry younger women and all this Mm. stuff. Let's figure out how to have great sex together. And when we set about doing that, we realized it's easy. If somebody just tells you what to do, Lulu, and nobody does because we have a very repressed sexual society that And that repression manifests in sex going weird, like looking wrong in the movies and pornography and the things that frankly are degrading to women, don't work for women. We've been essentially living under what I call the patriarchal rules of sexuality. Totally. And I (laughs) stand for the matriarchal rules of sexuality. Cause if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Totally. I love that. And we're going to dive into those topics. Cause I think they're really important as we're embracing like the feminine aspect of the earth, moving into this divine feminine energy. And we're going to talk about yeah. that. And which is so important as women, as we embrace that. And I love that you yeah talk about your own story. Cause that's how we can really, and we're, there's so many women that can relate to that same yeah. story, which is so important. So let's jump in and talk a little, oh, sorry, go ahead. Did you have to I just wanted to say yeah. one more thing about that. And that is that when I decided to get into the business of sexuality, I am not, I don't see people one-on-one. I'm, I own two companies. One is a, I am a publisher of passionate lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills. I teach people how to transform having sex into making love. My brand of sex, if you will, the things I teach people through my books and programs, and I've written 44 books and programs and published the work of other excellent people. I call it heart-connected, conscious lovemaking. So it's the antidote to what in pornography, which is very male oriented, degrading to women. It's performative. It's not heart connected. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my businesses. The second business. And what I found was I can teach people how to make love and how to talk about what their needs are and how to know what they want and ask for it and all those things through my work. But if their bodies aren't working right, then (laughs) they're not going to get off the ground. If it hurts, you're not going to do it. And I started delving into regenerative treatments and in my mid fifties, regenerative treatments and biohacking, et cetera. And what I found, what I realized was that there are a lot of people who have difficulty with simple vitamin absorption and nitric mm-hmm. oxide production. And I happen to have a genetic SNP called MTHFR. Mm-hmm. I'm a very poor methylator, especially of B vitamins, which are mm-hmm. vital 
for sexual function, yes. vital for mitochondrial energy and the energy and appetite for sex, because your libido is essentially the other side of the same coin as your health barometer is <laughs> pegged to your libido b- barometer. So if you right. don't feel well, you don't feel like having sex. If you feel great, you're horny again. <laughs> right. uh, and that starts all in the microbiome. So I started another company called the 20, the 80, 20 rule, the 20% that get the results. It's called mm. Pareto's principle. And the 20, we make an organic nitric oxide booster because so many people, both the male and female mm. body mm-hmm. of us think that my libido is down because my hormones are low. And yes, your testosterone has Mm -hmm. a definite effect on your libido. Your estrogen has a definite effect on the thinning of your vaginal mucosal lining, but it doesn't really answer the question. You could top yourself up with hormones and still (laughs) and be healthy and still not have desire. Why is that? Or why aren't things working? Often it comes down to something as simple as nitric oxide, replacing nitric oxide. And what I think is so interesting is that women will tell, and I didn't want to, I wanted to make a citrulline based nitric oxide supplement Mm -hmm. for women and their male body partners, both, because we get our men to do things. We're doctor moms so much of the time in our relationships (laughs) with our male partners. They're terrible about that kind of stuff. And I didn't want people to take something full of pesticides made in China, white powder from corn liquor, inoculated with bacteria that convert the arginine into citrulline. And then you've got this white powder that, yeah, technically it's a synthetic product that will give you citrulline, but it has all the pesticides they sprayed on that cornfield right in the (laughs) product. And nobody needs that. (laughs) I started a supplement company called The 20 and my very first product, which has been a bestseller, is called Flow, F-L-O-W. I'll give you a link for that for your listeners. It's a special podcast link for you. Great. It's at buyflownow, B-U-Y-F-L-O-W-N-O-W, buyflownow, because... I've found that when women give their partners nitric oxide, their male partners can begin to get off of Viagra, Cialis, Levitra. They don't need that because their nitric oxide stores are so low that they can't Mm -hmm. maintain or even attain, achieve an erection. And for women, their lubrication comes back because they're getting the blood flow back to their pelvic bowl. That's what goes missing. By the time we're 50, we have half the nitric oxide production we had at 20. And that's if we're eating a lot of leafy green vegetables every day, if we're eating beetroot, if we're not using a fluoride toothpaste, (laughs) we're not using an antibacterial mouthwash. And if we have high stomach acid, so we can break all the greens down, (laughs) beets and the greens, the reds and the greens (laughs) into (laughs) the nitric oxide that helps get the blood flow where we want it to go to our brain. When we want to think to our heart, when we're working out to our pelvic bowl, when we're making Mm -hmm. love. And so, so that's my like, ninja simple first step super cheap trick to getting your sex life back is that if you can't get blood flow to your genitals you don't even feel like having sex because the here's the thing that really annoys me lulu everybody's talking about guys and their erectile function everybody's talking about that right but if you imagine a banana and That's your male partner's penis. Half of his penis sticks out of his body. He's got another 50% that goes down and in toward his testicles. If you take that whole banana and you peel the skin off, the fruit inside is erectile tissue. Mm -hmm. His penis is basically a big sponge that the blood must flow into. You take that same banana fruit, turn it into a circle and put it around our vagina inside underneath the skin of our vulva and we have the same amount of erectile tissue as our male body partner nobody's talking about nobody does <laughs> that's definitely not a topic that comes up in regular conversation <laughs> yeah and so women are like where did my orgasm go i can't right. seem to get there it's taking me 20 minutes to do what used to take me two and it's because of the lack of blood flow into all that spongy tissue around our vulva. So when women are like, oh my God, 
not. I guess I'm not getting my clitoral erection, my urethral right. erection, my perineal erection. We have a golden bracelet of erectile tissue wrapped around our vagina. And for most women, like I was, they were struggling achieve climax from penetration thinking they just couldn't do it. And so many women are like, I guess I'm just not a woman who can have orgasms from intercourse. I guess that's some other lucky woman. And then their husband or their partners, yeah, I guess you're not. And then they give up trying. Mm. And then she's having unsatisfying sex with her partner out of feeling like she has to, other than being like, let's schedule some dates. I'm, I want to make love. this feels <laughs> right. good for me. Yeah. And here's an interesting thing. Oh God, I'll let you get a word in edgeways. I really got on a roll here. <laughs> no worries. I love what I do. <laughs> yeah, that was I, great. <laughs> I, I read this piece of scientific research where there were 3,500 people who were shown images of people from ages 18 to 80, and they had to guess their age. And they guessed the ages of people. And the people who had frequent intimacy, approximately three times a week, they were intimate in some way, they looked 10 years younger mm. than their cohorts. <laughs> At 61, I am doing everything I can to stay young and vital. And one of those things is having satisfying lovemaking with my partner. And I want women to know that as you get older, you actually have more skill and more ability to have great sex than when you were younger. Right. <laughs> and that every woman can have orgasms from intercourse. And it comes from getting the blood down to the pelvic bowl, getting enough time to get aroused because our guys are very fast acting with their hemodynamics, their blood flow. Mm -hmm. Women, we're much more like a little, an English muffin that the butter has to melt into all the nooks and crannies. <laughs> exactly. And that takes a little time to toast that muffin. <laughs> These are just some things where women are probably listening and going, oh, Dr. Lulu, thank you so much. I didn't even know I had this tissue. Right. I didn't, Hands un up. <laughs> didn't understand. Exactly. So I love to be able to tell women there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. Everything can be fixed. You can have the best sex of your life life in your 60s, 70s, and 80s, and it will make you look younger. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yes, it's so important. I love so many aspects that you talked about there. And one piece it's really important I want to go back to is the pelvic floor, because a lot of women don't even understand what that is about their body. I think there's lots of pieces around being a female, and but we're not taught about our bodies, how it works, how to make it even better. And I think there's this old philosophy that is horrible that as women age, everything goes out the window. Oh, you're going to be more tired. You're going to not going to want to have sex. You're going to not going to enjoy your life. So many things. And that's a really old philosophy that I think mm -hmm. we're really changing now moving forward. I loved everything that you said about having the best body, looking younger, feeling younger, having great sex, having longevity. These are the things of 2023 that we want to embrace as women and be empowered with our bodies. And that's why I wanted to have you on is to have the sexual component is so important as women. And I think it's often brushed under the table, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> it should be at the top of the table. <laughs> Everything about women is brushed under the table, mm -hmm. but we're bringing it out and we're laying it on the table. Bam, let's go. <laughs> let's Take go. it back. That's we're, taking right. our, exactly. we're taking our world back now. Yes, exactly. So let's talk about libido, which we you okay. totally mentioned. Why yeah. do you think that so many women are having a problem with their libido? What do you think is like that? As a naturopathic physician, I'm always talking mm -hmm. about the root, right? What's the root cause? And you work with so many women and have helped so many people. What is that kind mm -hmm. of like signature root that you see circulating that main theme? Yeah. So there's libido, desire, and arousal. And they're, they're basically three interlocking circles. Libido is your physical health. Desire is your mental health, your emotional feelings about yourself, your self-worth, your limiting beliefs about your own sexuality, your own mm. fears, your desire or not for your partner. And then arousal is the way that our bodies get turned on. And a lot of women think they're broken because they're not getting turned on like their male body partners. And we have mm. very different arousal patterns than our men. So I'd like to come back to that because I think it's 
it's one of those things that makes women feel like, oh my God, I thought it was me all these years and it's not a, the, all women are like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so if you don't mind, we can revisit that, but I'll answer yeah. the libido question. And the libido question is basically two things. Number one, it's your gut microbiome, the health of your gut microbiome, mm -hmm. and it's all of the toxins and junk in our universe and what the assault is on our body of that. So once you get yourself detoxified a bit and you start eating well and cooking your own food and eating organic vegetables and pasture-raised meats and sustainable seafoods and you get rid of all the white flour, the white sugar and 90% of the wine. <laughs> a girl still has to have her yeah, damn We can Chardonnay. have a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> it's good for Pick you. Your poisons. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you alcohol over of... sugar for sure, folks. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so once you start getting your food in alignment and you start getting your movement work, you can start getting moving again. Then you work on your gut microbiome and you have to, you have to reseed it. You have to get rid of the intestinal bacterial overgrowth and the fungal overgrowth, the candida from all the white flour and the sugar mm -hmm. that you ate, processed foods. You've got to clean out your system and that will start making you have the energy for sex again. So that's right, number exactly. one. Number one is diet Battery. and nutrition. <laughs> And supporting your, yeah, fueling your battery and uh, supporting your biome and your immune system. Exactly. So that's number one. And then I think it's so simple and you talk about it on your show all the time. This is what, <laughs> right. this is what we have to do. And it's a daily task to feed ourselves well and to get ourselves moving. Mm -hmm. it's, it is literally, it has to be for the forefront of your mind. And one of the things that, that I do is I cheat. I, I have a personal trainer every day. And depending on where I am, I have two homes, one in the North and one in the South of California. In the South, he even works on Sundays. So I work <laughs> out seven days a week when I'm beach. Yes. <laughs> I work out six days a week when I'm on the mountain. Now I've had to take off two weeks, two months of working out. I had a facelift two months ago and they did a lower face and they did a neck lift. And when you remodel that tissue, you can't be like straining or moving or jerking or right, anything jumping up and down. <laughs> it's literally plastic surgery is that they're remodeling your tissue. They've moved stuff from here and put it up here. Yeah. And so you have to be super careful to know you're going to take some time off for certain things. Exactly. I also at the same time did PRP platelet rich oh, nice. plasma on yeah. my elbows. I had strained the tendons of my mm. elbows lifting heavy weight. I love heavy weight. I'm really a barbarian when you take <laughs> the covers off of Susan Bratton and you peek <laughs> under the hood. She's a Viking barbarian. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> So I did both things at the same. I was like, okay, I'm going to do all my work. I right. Had, right after done. I had my facelift, I did a PRP facial mm -hmm. with the skin pen and my own PRP with exosomes. Nice. And I did the PRP hair so that my hair stays thick because I lost half of it with my, co I had COVID and I lost half my hair oh, fell out post-viral so, yeah. COVID hair loss. Very common, but PRP works like a charm. So yes, between great. the facelift, the laser and the PRP, and we're going to come back to PRP because PRP is fantastic for the genitals. And oh, that's yeah. why I wanted to pre-frame that we're <laughs> going to get to PRP and what it does and how it works because it's very regenerative and I use it everywhere I can. <clears throat> My cheat is that there's no shoes, clothes, trips, anything in the world that I would rather spend my money on. The things I was, the last things that I would give up would be my hormone replacement and my workout partner. <laughs> <laughs> Two because key things. Yes, definitely. That's what keeps me going. Yes. And the money to spend on quality food. Yeah. Those, those things are really those very things. important. Yes. And I think in the state that we're living in now, we're food is more expensive, but you only have one body in one life and it's our temple, right? We want to be putting into it, especially when it comes to food nutrients. And I liked how you touched base on all the aspects of detoxification and eating cleaner, learning about what you're putting in. And of course, like you said, those are all the topics that I talk about on my show. Yep. So you can tune into other episodes if you want more about that. We've got lots of juicy stuff out there. And yeah. when we're, I loved how you talked about libido and yeah. 
one of the things I was, when I was researching you, which is, you have such great topics, you had one about rewriting your libido story. And I thought yes. this would be a great place for us because 2023 is all about rewriting your story. Mm -hmm. How are you going to live 2023 in a new way? Putting 2022 in the past and stepping into that new forward space. So how do women look at their libido story and rewrite it? Yeah, that's interesting. Let me give you the link for that. It's at libidobook.com and you can download that. And that is a essentially a guided process that Dr. Keisha Ewers and I did. She'd be great to have on your show. She is a true tantric goddess oh, and nice. functional medicine doctor. Great. So she's at the intersection of love making and bringing the cosmic and spiritual into your life with functional nutrition and wellness. So Keisha and I put together this thing called re rewriting your libido story. You get it when you go there, when you go to libidobook.com and enter your name and email, you'll be on my email newsletter. I have a sex tips email newsletter, which is also a lovely thing, but you can unsubscribe if you don't want it. But what you get is you get a downloadable PDF with the libido book and you get a video of Keisha and I walking you through mm -hmm. how to rewrite your libido story. Nice. So what it is essentially kind of a combination of things. It, the first thing that it does is it helps you get over the traumas that have happened in the past. The shame, the bad sex, the body image issues, the lack of knowledge, the fear, mm -hmm. the traumas that have happened to you the abuse, the assault, whatever it might be. It helps you understand the process for moving through that and getting back to your whole and original source self. And then it helps you envision what you want your sexual life to be like. And in going through that kind of guided conversation with Keisha and I, it really helps you get a level set for that. And a lot of what we talk about is how does it feel to be in a relationship where you feel desired and have desire? Mm. What is it like to have pleasure without any anxiety? What is it like to have pleasure that feels good every time and you don't have to worry? Mm. What is it like to achieve your orgasmic capacity with grace and ease and joy and no worry? What is it like to no longer worry about what your body looks like and to be at peace with it? What is it like to feel that you're with your beloved and that you're completely sexually satisfied in your relationship? These are very important things that when you have that kind of sex life that is a gift, it's right up there in the pantheon of the beautiful things in life that include the love of family and friends, the deliciousness of perfectly nourishing food, the beautiful art and music that's on our earth, our, the nourishment of of our spirituality and faith. These are the things that make life worth living. And sex is right in there when it's good. It's <laughs> exactly. right in there. Not, yeah. It's not just making you younger. It's filling you with oxytocin, mm -hmm. neurotransmitters. It's yep. rebooting your hormone system. It's a vascular incident where you're just pu pushing blood all the way out to the edges of all your capillaries, mm -hmm. keeping the tips of you youthful and vital. It's nourishing your body. That's it's right. rebooting your nervous system. And so those are all the health and heart benefits and a heart as in love, not mm -hmm. just as in Kathom, kathom, kathom. <laughs> so right. that's a really good one. Libidobook.com is very encouraging and nourishing for people. Oh, thank you, Susan. I love that because I think that's a really great, thank you for sharing that link for our listeners. And it's a really wonderful way to really start to rewrite not only their sex and libido story, but their health story. And I'm always talking to my patients about that and listeners about how are you going to rewrite your health story? Because we're in control always of our own life and vision and empowerment, especially as women. What do we want it to look like? And you're able to create whatever vision of your life you want and doing mm -hmm. that and that sexual foundation piece. And that reminds me of a question I wanted to ask you is I'm always talking about the foundations of health, water, food, sleep, and what are your thoughts? Why isn't sex one of the foundations of health that I feel like it's always missed in that when we're talking about it, why do you think that piece is so left out? Patriarchal control of female bodies mm. and religious repression. Exactly. <laughs>
Yeah. In a nutshell, that's exactly it. <laughs> Listeners out there. Yeah. Well, and sister. Yes. And so when we're thinking about empowering ourselves as women moving forward, how yeah. do we nurture that feminine side within ourselves, nurture yeah. that feminine energy that's really starting to be cultivating within the earth and to stand up within that, within ourselves and say, yeah, this is what I need. And this is how I can take charge of it. Yeah. A lot of women say to me, I don't know what I want. I just know what I'm getting. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I say to them, yeah, you know what you want. You're just <laughs> not listening right. as your yoni. Now I like to use the tantric lovemaking words for the genital system. So the female genital system, we could call it the vulva, right. but the vulva, that's really the words for the outside yes, of the <laughs> genital system. And then the inside is usually called the urogenital system. Yeah. And that's a dumb thing too. And then vagina is out because <laughs> if we think about our sex life as only our vagina, we're not even talking about our entire erectile tissue system, right. we've which lost is the other pieces of the game there. <laughs> we've lost our clitoral structure, our urethral structure, and our perineal structure, which are the three erectile tissue systems of our vulva or urogenital system. Mm -hmm. So I like the word yoni, Y-O-N-I. And that's a tantric word for that our all of our womanly pleasure body between our legs. <laughs> <laughs> right. The whole all, <laughs> <laughs> and for a man, and it's called his lingam. And that would be his, his equipment. So one of the things that I think is really important for women to understand is that go back, going back to that erectile tissue system, mm -hmm. we have as much erectile tissue system in our yoni. And I like to call it my little yoni, like my little pony, my little sparkle yoni, which is something cute. <laughs> we have as much erectile tissue in our yoni as our male body partners do in their penis, number one. But they get an erection very quickly because it's a straight shot. It's just that long banana. Right. Ours is the nooks and crannies. They wake up in the morning, if they're healthy, with an erection. Mm -hmm. They get morning wood. They have nighttime erections between three and six of them every night they get a dose of testosterone in the morning and a dose of testosterone in the afternoon because they have these hormone cycles. cycles we don't have any of that we have lower testosterone we're on a 28 day moon cycle even after menopause we have all the nooks and crannies to deal with and so what happens is we have been having sex on the male timeline so no wonder you don't want to have sex. You've literally been having sex your entire life too fast. Mm. You never got the kissing, breast play, full body touch, foot massages, hair stroking, words of adoration and appreciation, mm. words of encouragement, me pleasuring, manual stimulation, oral stimulation from a toy. You've never had someone give you pleasure without expecting you'd repay them for it mm -hmm. we've had all of these things done to us wrong not by anybody's fault just because nobody knew but now you know now you know <laughs> now you know and so when your lover is touching you because your yoni is saying to you i'm not ready for that that's too rough he's scratchy there's a hair on his penis, on his lingam that I don't like. His breath is bad. I'm worried I didn't shave well enough. These sheets are scratchy. There's no good towels. The light's too bright. I don't like this song. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. What if I smell? Like this is basically what's going through your head because you are estrogen dominant and estrogen, though I love it because it gives me supple skin, also makes me a judgy worry wart because that's <laughs> we are the prey exactly <laughs> and so we are the skittery little ponies that mm -hmm. we're the my little yoni ponies and <laughs> the mountain lions are going to get us we're the ones that suffer with the stis we're the ones that get pregnant and have to have the babies or have the abortions or do whatever mm -hmm. everything falls on us and so when we are rushed over and over and over and we don't even know that our body works the way it does we think mm. we're supposed to be like a dude and already <laughs> be horny when he comes to us and goes do you want to have sex and we're like uh 
no, asshole. I don't want to have sex. Why would you even ask me? I'm in the middle of something here because he's already horny and ready to go. And we're not. And he has no idea how far back behind him are. Right. In addition to the fact that by the time we hit middle age, we are more tired. Our vagina is less lubricated. We have less sensation, which brings <laughs> me back to why one of there's two things you can do to have a better sex life. Number one, is fix your aging genitals, which I definitely want to talk about. Number yeah, let's two, talk about that. That's a good, yes. that's a great topic. <laughs> and number two is understand there's not a darn thing wrong with you. You've been trying to have sex like a dude your whole life. <laughs> and so when you're like, wait a minute, babe, I'm going to need a foot rub. We're going to have to have a date. I need a full body massage. I need you to rub my head before we start. Whatever you need. I need you to hold me. One of my techniques I'd love to give your listeners is a technique from a, one of my most popular books. It's called Sexual Soulmates, mm. The Six Essentials for Connected Sex. And one of the techniques is called the soulmate embrace. And we have honestly, Lulu, we have never been held the way we need to be held mm -hmm. by our male body partners. Mm -hmm. They, we do, we go, ah, and they let us go. Wait, wait, like, come back. <laughs> yeah. So the soulmate embrace is at soulmateembrace.com. No surprise there. Right. Yeah. Ding. And, <laughs> and I really hope that if you're listening to us now and what I'm saying is resonating with you. Yeah. I need my dude to slow down. One of the best ways to train him to slow down and drop in and connect with you and allow you to get into your body and out of that crazy estrogen monkey mind of yours right. <laughs> is to do the soulmate embrace. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the first couple times you try it, you're going to have sewing machine legs and you're going to want to jump off the bed and run away because <laughs> you're not used to calming down. You got to calm down, but that's what men are for. That's what our partners are for, no matter what gender they are, no matter right. what body they're in. We need our partners to help lull us into heart connection, mm, resonance with exactly. them so that we can begin to climb our very long, slow arousal ladder. And when <laughs> we allow ourselves to get what we need, mom is happy and everybody's happy. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not like a ladder, like you're saying, it's like that loop system, the golden circle really starting yeah. to activate that. And I love that. That's great. And the, we'll have just for you if listeners out there if you're tuning in we're going to have all these links in the show notes for you so don't worry about having to scramble and write everything down even though they're really easy we'll have them there for you so you can tune right in and find them very quickly because Susan is giving some great tips for everyone so we're talking about libido and desire and you talked a little bit about the matriarchal and patriarchal sex and yeah. one of the things the concepts that you mentioned in your all of your great videos is the arousal <laughs> matrix <laughs> yeah. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. What is that exactly? It's this notion that our partners need to touch us from the outside and work their way in. Instead mm. of grabbing for our crotch or grabbing our breasts or trying to spin our knobs and push our buttons right away, because that's what they want from us. Mm. Want us to grab them by the lingam. That calms them down. Mm. But we're not ready for that. So it, it is really this slow approach, the soulmate embrace, some gentle kissing, touching us on our hair, on our neck, on, on our chest, not just our breasts, mm. stroking our back, stroking our buns, stroking our thighs, rubbing our feet, telling us they love us, telling us what, what's beautiful about us, letting us know we smell good, we taste good, we're beautiful to them, that, they're, that they find us sexy, that they love us, that we're safe, that we're secure. And the verbal is so important for mm. women and we just don't get enough of it. A lot of people have very quiet lovemaking. Also that sex isn't intercourse. Sex is all of the things I just said, oral pleasuring, using toys, playing together, sexy lingerie, role play, mutual pleasuring, using your hands, yoni and lingam massage. It's all of those things. And when we slow down and slow down some more, it gives our body time to catch up with our partner so we can have 
satisfying sex. It lets the blood flow in so the tissue swells. So it literally sends more signals of pleasure to the brain so that we have more orgasms or even have orgasms for the first right. time. Exactly. Yes, that was a great description. And it's really important too, when we we're talking about energy that you mentioned earlier, and if we're in that state of not relaxation, we're in this kind of like more excited state of stress, those hormones in our system that like you've mentioned and the yeah. cortisol and in the adrenal system, they're not going to mm -hmm. be releasing in a way that mm -hmm. really helps to ignite that passion or help support. I, I almost, I feel like that's a better word, support us in that journey through the sexual orgasm. And it's important for those hormones to be activated. And it's not just about, I think that We've been band-aiding a lot as women. And you mentioned hormone replacement therapy too, which is a great way and helpful system. But it's like, we don't want to band-aid that and not really reach the true root of what's going on within the sexual, not, I don't want to say dysfunction, but the story that needs to be rewritten, I think is a better word. Cause I don't think there's a sexual dysfunction. It's just like, it's right. been maybe run over 8,000 times with the tire. <laughs> maybe that's a better way. My sex life got flattened in the street. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> my sex like I run over by the Mack truck. Yeah. So the Mack truck called my husband's testosterone. <laughs> exactly. And we are helping with that. This episode, really helping women to be empowered and learn about their sex with a new vision, right? With those new glasses of empowerment. And we were talking about the foundations of sex. So when we're coming in and let's go back to what you wanted to talk about earlier. And that was the piece about ways to really, one was the PRP yeah. place. I want to say, let's mm -hmm. talk about that first. So let's not get yeah. too ahead. So if you can go back to yeah. that, because I want to make sure we talk about these important pieces that you said earlier, let's make sure we talk about yeah. that. <laughs> okay. So we talked about taking nitric oxide. Correct. That's your ground zero. The second thing you want to do to reverse aging genitals is you do want to look at hormone replacement. So it really helps a lot. I use estrogen cream in my vagina and I use testosterone cream on my labia and clitoral structure. And then I take progesterone sublingually. Mm -hmm. And those things really are very helpful, but you don't have to do them to have a good sex life. The next thing is that there's basically the inside and the outside of your vulva. So in the inside, you have your vagina. And on the outside, you have, let's just call it the outside of the vagina, you have all your clitoral structure, labia, and all of that tissue, as well as the bladder tissue and the urethral area tissue and the pelvic musculature. So there's the, what you can do that is basically one-stop shop holistic rejuvenation is something like the Femi wave. Mm. Femi wave and its male counterpart is called the gain is called gains wave. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. gains wave is wildly popular. And right. now they've finally launched Femi wave. And most men I know who are friends of mine go for gains wave treatments because they know me and now they're aware of it. And they're like, oh my God, I can't live without this. This reverses <laughs> my atrophy. Right. So Femi wave is essentially, it's called an acoustic wave and it it's administered. You go in for treatments and it's administered on the top of your skin, on your mons pubis, mm -hmm. on your labial areas, on the clitoral area on the perineal area for pelvic floor support mm -hmm. and it penetrates into the skin it's a series of treatments six treatments in a package and they take 15 minutes there right. and there's no recovery time from them but they are doing and the reason they space it out they don't do it all at one time is that it's doing micro damage subcutaneous in tissue tiny lip bits of micro like damage of the tearing. tissue mm -hmm. now, not even tearing more like stimulation more like sh more like shaking it up ah uh, okay gotcha and because it's a shock wave it's a wave it's an acoustic right. wave sound when they administer that to all those areas it helps with urinary incontinence it helps you regain clitoral sensation it helps with vaginal lubrication. It helps with vaginal tightening and toning. It helps with pelvic floor toning. And it helps with, I forgot one. Oh yeah, one of my favorites, the aesthetic piece of it, the external labia mm. gets saggy. It plumps them, <clears throat> excuse me, it plumps them back up. So Femi Wave to me is like the number one thing you can possibly do that 
takes care of all the stuff that goes wrong as you age. You can also, if all your problem is just a tiny little bit of incontinence and vaginal, like laxity, loss of lubrication, there's an at-home device, a vagina device mm -hmm. I really like as well. They work beautifully together. I use both. And this vagina device is called the VFit Gold. And what it does is it uses three technologies. It's at vaginadevice.com. And it uses red light therapy, which oh, is called nice. photobiomodulation. Yeah. So it's stimulating new tissue growth of the vaginal mucosa, thickening the lining. This is really good for women who don't want to take estrogen. It uses toning. So it's got a vibration to it, mm -hmm. doing your Kegels for you. Exactly. And it has warmth, which recollagenates the vaginal mucosal lining. Women who have had odor that's been undiagnosed, like there's no bacterial infection, there's no right. yeast overgrowth, <laughs> nothing showing, they can't figure it out. They'll use this and it remodels the glycogen inside the vagina in the vaginal microbiome. Nice. That's great. So this vagina device is a really nice thing for women who are like, I'm not really ready, or I can't get to FemiWave, or I can't afford it. It's like the difference between $400 and $1,500. If you have $1,500, get the FemiWave. If right. you don't, get the vagina device. If you can't afford the vagina device, at least you can do the nitric oxide, the flow supplement. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of yoni massages from your partner with organic avocado or sweet almond oil, mm -hmm. really get the blood flowing in there. And that will help a bit with reversal of the atrophy that causes all these problems. And then last but not, there's two more steps. Okay. So now you're like, but I've got all the money in the world. What, would <laughs> I, what else could I do? What does Susan Bratton do? Yes. How is she 61 and having the hottest sex of her life with a dripping, luscious, wet, gorgeous, pink, perfect <laughs> vulva that's massively orgasmic. <laughs> I want what she's having. Right? That's right. I'll take so, one. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm having in addition to using my V-Fit regularly, so this vagina device, and getting Femi Waves is I also get PRP or platelet-rich plasma, the same thing I did in my face, I did in my hair, I did in my elbows. I have it injected into my my clitoris and my urethral structures. And that's called the O shot or orgasm shot. I go in to see Dr. Robin Benson, who you should have on your show. She's amazing. She nice. is a true goddess. And I get blood taken out of my arm, put in a centrifuge. They take off the most of the white and red blood cells. They're left with something called a fibrin rich matrix of platelet rich plasma. Mm -hmm. Put that in a very small syringe. They put a little lidocaine on my clitoral structure and urethral structure, and they inject that in the spongy tissue of my erectile structure, just like my male, male body partners. <laughs> and it's sucks it up because it's a sponge and it regenerates more tissue like itself. So you regrow the tissue that you've lost. And that brings in new sensation because you get new, you get nerve growth, mm -hmm. get more vascular growth. So you get better blood flow and you get more tissue growth. So you have more meat to your vaginal system again. Exactly. And that PRP is absolutely fantastic combined with the Femi wave because the Femi wave doing that tiny little bits of micro damage. Then you inject the PRP, which brings in cytokines, calls for more healing and growth factors mm -hmm. delivered to the area. It makes it even better. It's like a turbocharger for <laughs> Femi wave. <laughs> Turbocharge. And, <then, laughs> and then if you want to, you can add exosomes into your PRP. So you then you're even now you're adding rocket fuel. You're right. adding the exosomes, not stem cells, but exosomes, which are recruiting more healing factors from your own body. It's another way you're, you're sending a signal to your body heal here. This is the place that needs attention. Because ultimately that's what PRP does is it creates a bit of inflammation so that your body's, like, oh, there's a wounded thing here. Let's go repair. It's like a bone break. When the bone right. breaks, it builds back better. Yeah, exactly. So, so those are, that's the stack. It's flow. Then your Femi wave, your vagina device, your PRP, your O-shot and your exosomes. And 
between all those things, plus or minus your bioidentical hormones, up to you, girl, mm -hmm. I'm doing it. <laughs> that is extremely restorative, regenerative, incredible. You won't believe how, if you're 50 and you do this, you'll be like, oh my God, this is like when I was 30. I forgot. <laughs> I did not know how much function I lost. So for all the women who are going out there and getting their Botox and their fillers and their lasers and their facelifts mm -hmm. and their dye jobs and their <laughs> body massages and their whatevers, these are things that are like health from the inside out for the things mm -hmm. that'll actually make you look younger than all your cohorts because you're having great <laughs> sex. That's right. Exactly. The new foundation of health is all about sex. <laughs> I like yes. it, Lulu. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's true. I think that's yeah. going to be, I'm going to add that in. I have so many things I talk about with my patients with their foundations of health, but yeah. sex is not one that I like put in the, and I was thinking about that today as I was prepping for you. I was like, you know what? I think this needs to be one of the key foundations. The key pillars mm -hmm. for 2023 is sex because we need to move forward into that like sex empowerment phase as women. And like you said, mm -hmm. to have that feeling of richness and plumpness within every cell of our body where we mm -hmm. feel every day we feel younger and better. And it is from mm -hmm. working from the inside out using that nutrition and water and sleep and PRP and all the different things you mentioned, whether that's hormone replacement therapy, whatever you need out there, you're tuning and listening and you're gravitating towards the piece that Susan was talking about, that is going to help you today because there were so many tips. And I think we could talk about things like this on this subject for a really long time, Susan. I'm going to have to have oh, you yeah. back since you have 44 books. <laughs> <Which is, laughs> I'd love to, Lulu. Yeah, yeah that's my pleasure amazing. to come back. Yes. A lot of times the things that I like to talk about are more pleasure techniques for women. Yes. Because a lot of women are like, they don't really know what to even ask for, what right. are the possibilities? Because they're, they've only had what they've had. Mm. So they don't know what else is out there for them. And exactly. honestly, you give women three or four great ideas and they go to their partner and they're like, I'd like to do these things. And their partner's thank God. Okay. I'll do anything <laughs> you want. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. A couple of things as we're wrapping up today. I, one thing I wanted to talk about, which you mentioned in your comments and prepping for the show is the sex life bucket list. And I'd love for you to mention that. And then what are your, what's your like top number one on your second sex, 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 it, sex life bucket list. That's a hard one for me to come out. And, <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I was just about to mention the sex life bucket list. And <laughs> I thought, God, we've given everybody so much information already. I don't want to blow people out, but since but you let's do it, up, I know, right? Mine as well. <laughs> You've got a heavy sexual appetite today, miss. That's right, exactly. <laughs> I like it. The sex life bucket list is something I put together because what I realized that people want from me, I've been doing this for going on 20 years now. I've written hundreds and hundreds of passionate lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills. But what I realized that people also want is ideas for fun play dates, what I call mm. erotic play dates, things that you can do with your partner or solo pleasuring for advancing your sex life. Because I liked how you have this approach of here's what we're going to accomplish in 2023. You've got that on your mind right now. And you're a, you're a doctor, you're a goal oriented accomplisher. <laughs> <Right>. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know that you don't get it done if you don't have it as a goal. You right. can only accomplish so much. So if your sex life is something that you want to work on, what I put together, and it's at sexlifebucketlist.com. Easy. <laughs> it's a downloadable PDF. I don't save any data that, you know, that anything that you talk about is you download it at home, print it out at home. It's a little eight page PDF and it gives you 48 erotic play date ideas, things mm -hmm. that you might want to explore. Fun. And what you might want to have fun with. And if you have a partner, it's really fun for the two of you to schedule a date where you make dinner and you open your computer and you watch the 40 minute video I created for you. This is all free. Uh, the 40 minute video that I created for you that walks you through all of these different ideas and tells you what some of them are. Because some of them you're like, I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> But now I want it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now I got that long. it, right? Yeah. <laughs> what I do is I walk you through it and you mark A, B, or C. A is, I, this is definitely going on my bucket list. I've always wanted to do this. We've never done it. We've talked about it. It never happened. Let's do it. B is, it wouldn't be on my bucket list, but 
hey, lover, if you want to do it, I'll do it with you. Of course, <laughs> it's an experience that you want to have. I'm here to support you in your growth, your sexual self-expression and journey as well in this lifetime. And then C's are, it's not for me right now. Never say never because you look back on, as you That's mature right. <laughs> and you get more confident, you look back on things and now you're like, oh my God, I could never do that. <laughs> and now you really want to do it. So right. that, and then you take your list and you compare it with your partner's list. And then you make one short list of all the erotic play dates that you guys want to try this year. And you just slowly work through them. Okay, we're going to have a date on Thursday. We're going to do one of the things. We're going to get the stuff we need to do it. If there's stuff we need to do it, like some of them are certain toys I recommend. Couples rate themselves dead last in all kinds of sexual skills at incorporating toys into their pleasure with each other. Okay. I use an oral irrigator. I have a yogurt maker. I have a blender for my smoothies. I have an electric <laughs> car. I have so many gadgets in so many ways. Why would I not have gadgets in the bedroom? We exactly. live in the 21st century. We're not There's in the a lot age. of ones you can try out there. <laughs> there are, and most of them are junk. And so that's another thing I do is I vet the best toys. Nice. That's for right. men, men, for women and couples. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good too. So that's what Sex Life Bucket List is. And that's really a way that you can expand your pleasure together. And what's on my bucket list right now, I've done pretty much everything on there. That's how come <laughs> they're on there. Right, yes. <laughs> there may be like a couple of things I haven't done, maybe BDSME type things. And there's not a lot of that on right. there. This is actually a little more vanilla honestly, <laughs> than what you might think from, I've seen a lot of kind of lists of sex things you can do. And mm. there's stuff in there that's very distasteful that right. I just, this is for your, this is from bear. the heart center. <laughs> it is from the heart center. It's not the, it's not that kind of weirdo kinky stuff. Mm. You don't have to worry about that. It's much more loving, heart-centered, connected, playful, pleasurable, sense, sassy, sensual, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But what's on my list right now is that my partner, I would like him to experience blended pea spot orgasms. Mm -hmm. And I've always just been a little bit shy about butt play, but... I understand that the P-spot orgasm is an incredible experience for men and men really want to have it and they're too shy to ask. And there's a new toy called the Plex, P-L-E-X by Hot Plex. Octopus. That is a very nice internal vibrator that pleasures his prostate that I get the remote control for. <laughs> nice you're in control <laughs> and it has treble and bass <laughs> so that you can use two it has two different vibration yeah. sensations and I feel good about inserting that into my partner and then giving him pleasure with my hands and mouth at the same right. time that I'm operating that remote control and that's on the top of my list right now and I'm planning to do it nice. so that's great a little, thanks for sharing a, that that's great I love it yeah it's a little thing <laughs> yeah 2023 I love your bucket list I can't wait to hear from our listeners what's on their bucket list I'd that love to that. know that'd be really yeah fun. I so, love to know a yeah, lot of so we'll for women a lot notes. of them a lot of them want orgasms from intercourse and they want to try female ejaculation because mm. all women can ejaculate and it's not urine. It's the same as men. They ejaculate and urinate out of their penis. It's we the just same. have, a, it's the same. <laughs> and so a lot of women want that. And a lot of men want to become multi-orgasmic, have full body orgasms mm. without ejaculating. So they have stamina right. and they want to try the P-spot pleasuring. So that's really, those are two. And those are learned skills. There's 20 kinds of orgasms a body can have, a homo mm. sapien body can have. It doesn't matter whether it's XX or XY chromosome. It doesn't matter whether it's a penis or a vulva. <laughs> that We have 20 kinds of orgasms that are available to us. And so really it's just learning how to do them one by one, all the ones that are interesting to you. Mm. Those in and of themselves are really fun erotic play dates because the first time you do something, you know, it's new and weird and you're not sure. The second <laughs> right. time you do it, you start to see what it's all about. The third time you do it, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't do that earlier. <laughs> this is fantastic. Right. Why was I waiting for that? Yes, I love it. Yeah, and these are great things as we have Valentine's Day right around the corner. Start mm -hmm. planning your erotic sex dates with your partner and yeah. make it something fun you can do together. I love that. 
And as we're wrapping up, Susan, for today, yeah. one last fun question for you. If you had an unlimited budget, what would yeah. you do right now to make the biggest impact on our planet? Oh, I think I would probably, oh, it's so tough. It's a hard one. <laughs> There's ocean acidification and plastics problems. Mm -hmm. There's definitely climate, the climate crisis with fossil fuels. So moving more towards sustainable electric, solar, things like that. I'd also like to see our democracy shored up. We lift up our, not only our whole country and all of our people in our country, but so that our country can continue to be a beacon of democracy mm. and lift other countries up further. I think that's really important. Those are probably some of the top top three things that I think are where we should be trying to have our attention. What I do is I support an organization called Feeding America. Mm -hmm. Even in our country, there are a lot of people mm -hmm. food insecure and without food, you don't get very far. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and <no>. so <laughs> that's the charity that I support every month and really nice. feel good about because you have to do some. Yeah. Oh, I love those. Those are really great points. And I think that we're going to see a lot of changes happening in all those areas in 2023. And I think that's a great thing to think about what foundation or what a society, what's your contribution listeners? What are you helping? Mm -hmm. I myself am really passionate about the veteran community and I work a lot with that community and help that community. So that's a big place in my heart. And I think that's a, we have so many people that need our help in this world and this planet, yeah. and, but just look outside your front door in your own community. How can you help your neighbor? Maybe they need to have their sex life bucket list. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> seriously, thanks, Susan, for joining us today. I loved our conversation and I can't wait to share it with the world. Me too, Lulu. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to Dr. Lulu and I. And I send all the love in my heart to you today for having the intimacy and connection that you deserve. I love that. Thank you so much.